things were going good and then all of a sudden we ran out of water right here. We should be able to make her down this though. Pick up speed again. No luck this morning or last night. Bugs were too bad last night to really get any good fishing in, so we didn't catch anything. We only tried for 20 minutes or so. It's a really beautiful lake though. That is quite the bit of scenery right there. But uh, we're gonna make our way back up to Copa Way where we stayed the other night. And then we're going to go down Copa Way Creek down into Whetstone where we're gonna spend the night and should be able to get a walleye or a pike for a meal. Should be good. Um, yeah, we missed out on a whole day here from messing up the first day or else we would have spent an entire day here and got to do some actual fishing, but oh well. It is what it is. That's something else. <laughs> All right, Bluff Lake. We'll see you again sometime. Okay, got our bags down. Time to get the canoe. A couple other things. Here's what we're dealing with.
Go canoe tripping, they said. Fun it will be, they said. <laughs> oh, well, this part's not too long, at least. Yeah, this is fine. Deep spot. Oh, real deep spot. There's another bluff right there. Part of the other one, I guess. Okay, one trip down. Time to get the canoe. A couple other things. So you come to this big beaver dam, goes into nothing, and then this valley. Got to cut across around the corner. Got a beaver lodge. I don't know if that's in use anymore. I think they like water around it. There was a couple of deer standing here when we came around the corner. Tons of tracks. Ow, my head. Huh? My head.
Time for another one. Huh? It's only been about five minute paddle. Go around some more beaver dams. One more and then we're in Copaway, I think. Yeah, this is the last uh, lake. One more portage, portage and we're in Copaway. Cool. This is the last portage back to Copeway. We're gonna have a little lunch up there and then head down Copeway Creek. Hello again. A little drive through salami uh, action. Copaway Creek. Take us home. Not too long going down the creek. It opens up into this nice little spot. It's gorgeous. We truly are blessed to have this, eh? Yeah. Just we're able to just go out and yeah. do this and see oh. these things, yeah. feel the feels. It's the simple things. We found the portage marker at the trail. Sucks. We basically got lost. Found the other end eventually, but got lost coming back too. So I put this away. Wait till I'm at the other end because it's brutal. Well, it's morning and we're not on Whetstone. Back on Copaway. Um, got to the last stretch before Whetstone and Things got pretty thick. And we're running out of sunlight. It started getting dark in the woods. 
and the bugs are terrible. I ended up pulling the tick off myself and there was no water so we're getting pretty dehydrated and hungry. We just had to make the move back up here so we get water and fire going and food. Smart, smart choice. It was getting dark in the woods and it was only about seven o'clock at that time maybe, eight o'clock. But still daylight out here, but in there it was ugly. So we're gonna head back to Tangamong through the way we were supposed to come into here. So hopefully that goes better. And uh, Al started talking about Dairy Queen last night, so that's the driving force for today. That's our motivation, eh, Al? What's that? Dairy Queen? It's our motivation? Yeah, we'll see. Now to get the canoe. Beaver Dam, more creek, and then probably another beaver dam. Wow, it's another beaver dam. A beaver dam. This one's really holding water. Over there is where we bushwhack through from the wrong way. There's another lake up there, a little tiny thing. The water does come back. Here's what we're dealing with now. It's not too bad. Yeah, we just have to go slow. Yeah. This is still better than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> There's water. Yeah, compared to last last view. So hard to tell from up here too. It could be deeper than it kind of looks or yeah, worse than it looks. Load one done. Looks like we might make it out of there. This is quite the mud field to navigate. These logs help.
Be friggin' careful. Here's our next challenge. Another dam through a rocky cut. It's not bad, there's a little path kinda. We get the paddle for a minute, and then a beaver dam again, and we'll go from there. There's a rock to the left. Go, oh, no. There's a rock right here. I'm gonna do some pulling and dragging. What is that? <laughs> they have the longest uh, reach for sound for the call. What was it? Sandhill Green. They just fly over? Or... Uh, I don't know. I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, knee deep in mud. Oh. Oh. Shoes are about 10 pounds now. Oh. Here's where that river leads to. Valley of Rocks. Here's what's at the end of the boulder field, but it's a chore.
Look at her go, flying down these rapids. We got hung up on a log. Yeah, we got a little hung up. Things were going good and then all of a sudden we ran out of water right here. We should be able to make her down this though. Pick up speed again. Just be careful right there, it's hollow underneath. Okay. Got some chaga right here. Huh? Chaga. Do you want it? Oh, I don't know. I'll let you keep going, I'll saw it off. Just a little piece, still some, a little bit of growth there and then some newer stuff here. So, it'll be fine. It'll grow back. Cool. Another little beaver dam. And now we're into a creek and we're in a home stretch here. We're pretty stoked. So here's where we messed up. There's a big beaver dam right there. We went over it. There's a rock uh, ridge that comes down to the water. And we went in there. There's another creek that goes that way north. Easy mistake to make. In the beginning of the trip too. Yeah, first day. Just really messed up the whole trip, really. One last little beaver dam. And we're just about in Tangamong. There's the Crow River coming in. And we made it right on the lake. Now to get back to the cars. What a beautiful sight. Right up in there is a couple vehicles that are gonna lead us to food. All right, we're uh, back in the vehicles. I was just finishing up with the canoe, so. Uh, yeah, feels good to be out of there, but you know, you wait so long to get out there and you finally do, it's tough when you kinda are mad about how your trip went. Not much we could have done, we screwed up a couple times, but just wasn't the trip for this time of year. Gotta wait till spring next time, probably, if there's a next time. So yeah, anyways, it was it was a pretty good trip. Um, we learned a lot, which was kind of the main purpose of this trip. We've got another one coming up in July. Um, that's a seven day trip, and we're gonna do a trip out of the Lost Canoe Route book from uh, Kevin Cowan, so that should go a lot smoother. Um, at least we know they're doable and people have done them at some point and you know there's actual trails a lot of what we went through I think is only used in the winter so hence it's getting lost a couple times and just some of it was not good you live and you learn I guess and like I said that's the whole purpose of this we needed to learn what we need to bring what not to bring and uh 
get into the rhythm of portaging because um, we've never really done it. We've done one trip down the Crow River with the kayaks, but you know that's different too. It was it was different because we followed the river the whole way, right? So it was pretty simple, and that gets used by kayakers, I believe, and uh, or white water, you know, canoes and kayaks. So. Anywho, we're going to pop in at Dairy Queen for a snack and a treat. And then we've got about six pounds of chicken wings waiting at my house to be cooked and consumed. And uh, probably about 20 liters of water will be drank when we get home. And a couple beers. We deserve a couple cold beers. So, anyways. Until that next trip or any trip I happen to do in between, stay safe, make smart decisions, check your maps, check your compass. That was the other thing. I, I had a compass with us and I kept it in my pocket and it saved our butts a couple times. Um, just knowing where north was was a huge help because even yesterday when it started getting dark in the woods, uh, it kind of got scary like it's crazy how quick everything changes with a, um, a little less light Everything starts looking the same, you know, there's trees everywhere rocks everywhere um, The odd like there's probably three creeks where we were and we kept meeting up with one and then going with it But it wasn't the right one and that's where we went wrong obviously and uh, I don't know, I got a little frantic at the end because we just wanted to get back to Copeway where we knew and then get water was a big thing. Like, we were both not doing well. Um, the last trip back, um, we were just exhausted. Um, I ended up sliding or like slipping on a rock onto my side and that just about did me in like didn't hurt or anything but it was just like a uh, just a blow you know it just took my energy just to fall down basically and then get back up I know Al had a couple moments too when he was portaging the canoe where it was just getting stuck on trees and you know, at that point you just want to throw it through the woods. But we made it. Took us a little bit to get our spirits up last night, but it, it happened. And uh, we had a nice couple hours before we went to bed where there was no bugs and we were hydrated and we were fed, so we were a little happier then. So. Yep, anyways, um, it was really fun. It was good to cover that water. Um, never done anything like that. And it's crazy what you can find up there. Like, if you look at Bluff Lake on a map, it's like this tiny, tiny little lake. And it, it's up, it's elevated. And that's what really caught my attention with it is it's just, it was up there and um, it just looked scenic. So I really wanted to to get there and uh, that's what we did it was fun so till next time